Uh, good morning. My name is Tarek Benamar. First of all, I want to thank the conference for having invited me to speak. Unfortunately, I am not with you in Berlin, as I was looking forward when I accepted this invitation. Unfortunately, I had surgery a couple of weeks ago, and I'm recovering and cannot travel to be with you this morning. I would like to briefly introduce myself for those who haven't heard about my career and my last uh, 35 years in this business, and briefly in order to give you a vision of where I'm going with my company, Quinta Communications, and where my investments, and why we have decided to uh, launch a European distribution network with my financial partners, Goldman Sachs, who also I've invested with alongside them and other investors in the Weinstein Company a couple of years ago. I started my career as a servicing company in Tunisia, which is my native country. Uh, there I learned films by attracting big filmmakers, from Zifarelli to George Lucas in Star Wars and Raiders of the Lost Ark, and then starting co-producing films that were coming to Tunisia to help producers save money, make films inexpensively, and find alternate ways of financing. And I would co-finance these pictures by pre-buying France and Italy, which were my, the two territories where I was performing over the last 20 years. In the 80s, I went into television with Silvio Berlusconi, with whom I've been a partner for 25 years, and I learned there the pre-sale of film, television, pay and free. And over the last 20 years, I've evolved from a film producer to a communications company by becoming also a financier and assisting big companies like Rupert Murdoch's News Corp, where I had Prince El Walid invest in his company as one of the major shareholders. Also, I assisted Silvio Berlusconi in taking media set public and bringing investors successfully. And myself, over the last couple of years, became an operator of television in Italy when I assisted Rupert Murdoch into buying Canal Plus's Telepiu, which now has become Sky Italia, in the merge that he did with his pay television then stream. In 2003, I acquired two national frequencies from uh, Rupert Murdoch and launched a very successful free-to-air sports channel and now a pay TV channel with Mediaset, Universal Pictures and, and Warner Brothers in launching uh, four new pay TV channels in Italy which have started on the 18th. This evolution from servicing to producing to pre-sale to financing has given me the idea over the last couple of years as a film producer who has found difficulty like all colleagues on how to finance pictures. We've seen soft money, tax shelters, of course the usual co-productions, the usual pre-sales, but globalization of media, uh, explosion of television networks, and now of course internet, has brought us to think on how to find alternative ways of financing. Parallel to being a studio operator in Tunisia, where I still have my studios, I have also invested in the post-production industry by today being the leader in France, having bought all the labs that were in difficulty and going into partnership with Technicolor, who are my shareholders. And we now, of course, have all of the post-production, 3D sound and lab and printing, which has enabled us to also reduce costs. The name of the game is how to make movies, how to finance them, how to reduce costs in studios, how to reduce costs in post-production, and make money, which of course is the business that we're in, in order to make more movies. In the last four years, I've looked at the opportunity with Goldman Sachs to, inv to invest alongside them and other big investors to help Harvey and Bob Weinstein create the Weinstein Company. And we hope that will be a success. We are in our third year, uh, and it's doing quite well. We've had difficulties in the beginning, as always when you have a startup, but we can say now we have a real company and that it is distributing pictures in the U.S. and selling worldwide. After that investment, Goldman Sachs had the brilliant idea and Jerry Cardinale, who represents Goldman Media Equity Fund, to acquire Alliance Atlantis, the Canadian company, which you're all familiar, uh, which holds momentum in England and Arum in Spain. They've approached me and said to me, could you be the strategic partner? Could you bring to us France, Italy, and then then together we would look at Germany and Scandinavia, which is exactly what we're doing. I therefore decided to acquire, as you've seen in the press, Eagle Pictures, 
which was the first independent distributor, uh, excluding Rai01 and Medusa, which is tied to Mediaset, and excluding the majors, it is the number one in distributor. It was having cash problems. The bank wanted a new investor. It's exactly what I did, and I'm very happy to have acquired Eagle, which has a good brand, a good catalog, and Eagle will be part of the Alliance Europe. Together we are looking to create in France, and I'm in discussion confidentially with two important distributors to have a very important player in France join us. And as you've read in the press, Scanbox is the Scandinavian distributor that we're looking to merge with us in this European alliance. Germany is a market we're looking at, and this conclusion came really from the following analysis. There are 550 films which are distributed in the key European territories. I'm ignoring the US and Canada for the time being. And we, we, if you look at the 550 films that are distributed, let's say 250 to 300 are films finance or come from major companies. The other 250 are independent movies, either local films, whether French, Italian, German, or English or Spanish, and what I would call the independent world, English speaking pictures emanating from independent companies, uh, whether New Line, whether uh, Summit, or others, many players, and a lot of English pictures and a lot of English producers. So we're assuming there's 250 movies a year that are not distributed by major companies. Our reflection was the following with Alliance and Goldman Sachs. If, hypothetically, we could distribute 20 pictures a year, let's say our European structure would be a one-stop shopping for an independent producer who is used to pre-sales and can continue to pre-sell, and here he would come and offer us five territories. If you add Canada, that's six territories, and we would pre-buy or co-finance or co-produce that movie to distribute in all those territories. As globalization and day and date and piracy is coming, we would therefore distribute and market this picture simultaneously, as do, do the majors. The strength of the major companies is they have offices, and in each country, they apply their marketing strategy together to go day and date, either with the US or certainly with the European release. Our desire is to be an independent European distributor that offers the same quality as the majors, not the same manner in terms of maybe decision making. And therefore, we felt that there are 20 pictures that we can buy. Because if there are 250 pictures a year, there's room for others. And if we, with Momentum, Aurum, Eagle, my French distribution partner that I'm negotiating with, and Scanbox, and eventually Canada, of course, that is part of our team, we can offer producers out of those 250, and we're talking 20, 25 pictures, offer them day and date marketing uh, strategy, and also a concept that the majors have applied, cross-collateralization. What is the problem with pre-sales that you find? We find all, and myself as a producer. You pre-sell a movie. We have a tendency to want to oversell. The buyer has a tendency to want to underbuy. But competition makes it that sometimes we do oversell. What happens? The picture is released. The distributor is disappointed, if it's not successful, of course. I'm talking about the worst case scenario. How many times has he tried that distributor to renegotiate the final payment? to renegotiate the contract if it wasn't paid, if it wasn't secured by an LC. How many times we've had difficulty discounting that paper because some distributors have renegotiated. And in the credit crunch, we know, I, having done Hannibal Rising, it was fully financed by us and by uh, Ingenious Films, I found that first-class distributors who gave us high MGs Banks would not discount their papers. And the credit crunch that we are going to live in 2008 and 2009 will make it very difficult for certain excellent distributors, first-class distributors, maybe smaller than big companies, to get their paper discounted. So we feel if we can empty, if we can fill that gap, this vacuum of a signature, and with our company well capitalized, and Goldman Sachs and myself, that we will offer guarantees, financial guarantees to producers who are going to find a one-stop shopping instead of getting X from each country and then trying to discount those. They will have one document that will 
distribute the picture in all these territories, day and date. We'll have marketing strategy, we'll have prints and advertising, and even accounting-wise, it'll be easier. Because we're going to be a serious and big companies and we have big investors, we want to create confidence and security for that producer, for the overages. And also, if you look at the uh, piracy situation, we can go out together in Europe so that the piracy situation, the internet situation, so there's not a big gap between the English release, the Italian release, or other releases. This is new ground, but also cross-collateralization. As I was saying, when a distributor loses on a Spanish or an Italian market, he tries to renegotiate, either on a new picture or in saying, give me a discount, I really got hurt. Here, the advantage that if the Italian, and it's our Italian distributor, and our English distributor, is cross-collateralized, the producer will not be penalized. Yes, maybe we lost in Italy, but we made money in England. We made money in France, which covered Spain. At the end of the day, the producer will always see overages if there are overages, and it's easier to spread the risk over five to six territories than just to have it on a one territory. So that really is the concept. Now, globalization, what are we seeing? We're seeing, did we know 20 years ago that Yahoo, Google, and Internet, Microsoft would be the biggest companies in the world? We didn't. We are seeing that other players are coming into the market. We are seeing in France, and France Telecom is becoming an investor. Telecom Italia is also looking to buy films. There is a clear definition that content is king and back the way we always used to hear content is king, content is king. I think this is even more so today. The explosion of television, free and internet and pay and pay-per-view and uh, video on demand will make it that I don't think films will have a problem financing themselves. We just have to learn to be a little more sophisticated. Banks have to follow us and we have to find ways of adapting and changing the old model of pre-sales, uh, which was the name of the game for 20 to 30 years. We never thought DVD revenues would be what they are and probably internet revenues. Of course, the piracy, uh, piracy issue is something that we all need to face seriously and I, I'm sure the majors are more preoccupied than the independents that we are at trying to protect their wealth because if piracy in films is as severe as it is in music, there won't be films in the future. And that is something certainly that we can't afford. But that being said, I really believe that our strategy is just to fill a gap. And we will encourage other groups. Will there be other European groups like ours? Absolutely. Canapus is going to be one, Wild Bunch is going to be one, and maybe others. Uh, I know there's a, a Canadian international group that is a uh, that is also trying to do this. So my experience from film production, first film servicing, then film financing, and now owning television networks has allowed me to come to that conclusion, to still stay a content provider, to be able to service that local production or international production, if I can, through my post-production facilities or our studios, certainly reduce costs, because the name of the game is how many times we producers know that the money we don't spend is sometimes the profits we could have made. So I also think waste, which is also the big issue. Uh, I've had scripts sent by me by majors that I've budgeted, and I won't name them, half the price of what majors, because of the way the system works. We're small entrepreneurs, we're investors. We own our businesses, even if we are larger. And my group now is a billion euro group, but I'm still an entrepreneur. I started from scratch from Tunisia. Therefore, I know that every dollar or every euro not spent is the profits that one can make. And it's this with this saving mentality of non-waste that European distribution can adapt itself and not compete with the majors. We are not a competitor to the majors because first of all, we do not and cannot afford the 100 million or 80 million dollar movie that they do so well, the 10 pole picture, the, uh, merchandising uh, picture that if we could get our hands on one or two, it happened when New Line was able to have all these independent distributors with the, the trilogy. But this is not the name of the game. We are looking for that movie that the majors might not want.